Welcome back to the High Gas Fee Studio. It's good to see you again. As usual, I have a question for you. Do you know what the word struggle means? Well, I looked it up in the dictionary and it read that struggle is a forceful or a violent effort to be set free from something. I think sometimes we misuse this word. I've heard people say, I struggle to get out of bed in the morning, or I really struggle with math. When I think about the definition, a violent or a forceful effort to be set free from something, I don't think sleeping or a math problem is really a struggle. I'd like to introduce you to an artist who knew struggle, and he was able to tell stories of struggle in his paintings. His name was Jacob Lawrence, <laughs> and have I got a story for you. Jacob Lawrence was born in 1917 in New Jersey. He was the oldest of three children in the Lawrence family. His father worked as a railroad cook, then as a coal miner. But when Jacob was seven years old, his father left the family. His mother struggled. It was hard finding work with three small children at home. And she was black, which meant that if she did find work, she wouldn't get paid very much. Like I said, she struggled. His mother had no choice but to put the children into foster care. That means have someone else to look after him, probably a stranger. When Jacob was 13 years old, he and his brother and sister were reunited with their mother in Harlem. That is a neighborhood in New York City, and the residents are predominantly African-American. His mom enrolled him in school, but she needed something for Jacob to do after school. She found an after-school program called the Utopia Children's Center, and Jacob was eager to attend. He loved to draw with the crayons that they provided, often copying the patterns he found on his mother's carpets. His mother had inexpensive carpets laid all around the home to brighten up their poor living conditions. His teacher, Charles Austin, saw his drawings and he saw a real potential in Jacob Lawrence. Many well-known artists worked with the children in the community. They wanted to pass on their stories as artists during the Harlem Renaissance to the next generation. Jacob heard story after story. Some of the stories were about African-American artists and how they had to struggle to make ends meet, struggle to be black artists in a white world. And some stories were about the struggle of their heritage and slavery. Jacob Lawrence loved history. He loved hearing the stories told by his mother and by his teachers about African-American history and the people who played a role in it. His favorite things to do was to go to the library and study history and go to museums in New York and look at famous art. In 1932, the Great Depression hit. Money and jobs were scarce. Jacob had to drop out of school and get odd jobs to make some money for his mother, his brother, and his sister. At times, he would be a newspaper deliverer and at other times he would work construction. President Roosevelt started the WPA, which paid artists to create during the difficult time of the Great Depression. Jacob applied for a scholarship and was given $1,500 to paint a series of panels. Now, this is where it gets creative. Remember me saying that Jacob loved to hear stories? He also loved to tell stories, and he wanted to tell a story with his painting, but not just on one canvas. He wanted to tell a story using multiple canvases, almost like he was illustrating a book. Now, he had to figure out what story was he going to tell. He thought about it and thought about it, and then it hit him. He wanted to paint a story of the Great Migration. That was a time in the early 1900s when African Americans packed up all their belongings and moved from the South to the North for a better life. Jacob purchased 60 canvases. You heard right, 60 canvases. 
and he began to paint his story. I want to show you a few. As I mentioned, he called his story the Great Migration, and this was panel one or picture one. Underneath the picture, it read, During World War I, there was a great migration north by Southern African Americans. You can see from this painting that crowds of African Americans are at the train tracks waiting for the trains. Can you tell where the trains are going? What colors did Jacob Lawrence use? Can you see any facial expressions? The way he painted the crowd, it almost makes me feel anxious, probably like these people felt. And here is panel number 30 of the Great Migration series. Underneath this picture, it read, In every southern home, people met to decide whether to go north. Do these people have much in this picture? What colors did he use in this painting? They have no expression on their faces, but how they hold their bodies says a lot. How do you think they feel by how their bodies look? And here's one more. It is panel number 49 of the Great Migration. Underneath this, it read, They found discrimination in the North. It was a different kind. Discrimination means not being treated the same. How does this painting show people not being treated the same? This is just three of the 60 panels, but they say so much just by how Jacob placed the people in the paintings, by their body language, by the objects or lack of objects in the paintings. When the panels were displayed in the New York Downtown Gallery, they were a huge hit. The colors, the forms, how the painting was laid out caught the eye. And the stories behind the paintings caught the heart. Jacob Lawrence was the first African American to be represented by a New York gallery. Fortune magazine wrote an article about him, and the Museum of Modern Art and the Phillips Collection jointly purchased all 60 panels. Suddenly, at 24 years of age, Jacob Lawrence was famous. He was a famous African-American artist. It had never happened before. Because he loved history, especially African-American history, he started another series. 31 panels this time telling the story of Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. The panels were such a success, Jacob used them in a book called Harriet and the Promised Land. This painting tells us a lot. The first thing we notice are some very large feet. Harriet is lying down with her feet toward us. She has her head turned towards the sky. The sun is just starting to come up and it's time to rest. She and the runaway slaves traveled all night and would hide and sleep in the day. The bugs have just started to creep up onto the leaves at the bottom of the panel. Harriet holds her gun close. A family is resting by her head, a father, a mother, and a little baby in her arms. And here, Harriet is playing with her slave friends. Jacob used simple shapes, simple lines, simple colors. He painted those things on a canvas, and suddenly it came alive. Jacob Lawrence loved to paint and he loved to teach. He wanted to give to the next generation what was given to him, a sense of pride in his heritage, a knowledge of the struggles that his people had endured and still endure. He taught at several universities and is regarded as one of the most influential African-American artists in the United States. He brought awareness to the struggle of the African-American community. Remember, the word struggle means the forceful and violent effort to be free of something. He preserved the stories handed down from generation to generation. Jacob Lawrence painted until a few weeks before his death in the year 2000 at age 82. Shortly before his death, he said, 
For me, a painting should have three things, universality, clarity, and strength. Clarity and strength so that it may be aesthetically good. That means good to look at. And universality so that it may be understood by all men.